So MRSA is a drug, it has a, its own drugs. It's the bane of our existence. And so the number one drug right now still is vancomycin. It's a glycopeptide, which means it's just a very complicated uh, structure, but it, what it does is it interferes with the cell wall. So it's a cytal drug. And um, a, a related drug has recently been developed called daptomycin. It sounds the same, but it's actually a different chemical structure. We won't have to go into that, but it also interferes with the cell wall. Because there is a cephalosporin that has been developed specifically for MRSA called ceftaroline, which is obviously a very restricted drug, but may eventually um, uh, take the place of vancomycin. Aminoglycosides uh, are another cytal class of drugs that are extremely effective against gram-negative bacilli. So it's the Enterobacteriaceae, Pseudomonas, um, the highly resistant gram-negatives. Many of them are, are, are still sensitive to aminoglycosides. It's a very effective drug, but it has major toxicities because it affects the kidneys and it can affect your hearing. Basically anything that has tubules. We have other options, but in the face of more and more drug resistance, we're starting to see more use of this drug. So the aminoglycosides are, um, but they're only covering gram negatives. The next cytal uh, drug that you need to know about is metronidazole. It interferes with DNA synthesis, so it's a cytal drug. And its unique ability is really to uh, get anaerobic bacteria, particularly Bacteroides fragilis. And obviously when you're dealing with the abdomen, Bacteroides fragilis, anything in the abdomen or pelvis, you have to be concerned about Bacteroides fragilis, and you need to use a drug that will cover Bacteroides fragilis, and madronizole is a key drug that way. Its other interesting uh, use is in C. diff colitis. So it's our first-line drug because it's cheap for C. difficile colitis, quinolones. DNA gyrase inhibitors, so they interfere with DNA replication, and they're cytal. They have a, a very good activity against gram-negatives. There are basically three drugs in that class. There's, there is ciprofloxacin, cipro, there is moxifloxacin, and there's levofloxacin. Cipro is pretty much only gram-negatives, but moxi and levo add some gram-positive coverage, as well as even some anaerobic coverage. And the advantage of the quinolones is that they also get what we call the atypical bacteria. So Legionella would be covered. So these are drugs you could imagine, Moxie or Levo, you could use for pneumonia, someone where you're concerned about Legionella, but you also are concerned about strep. So the quinolones are very effective. They, get, they penetrate well. They don't have any track record for central nervous system. They apparently get good levels in the CSF. They're not used for meningitis. which is either Bactrim or Septra you, as the commercial name, sulfadiazine. Uh, but anyhow, the, this is the mo most important one to know. These are very cytal. They have very good activity um, against uh, gram negatives, but they also get some gram positives. They get, the, they get the strep pneumo. They can get staph aureus. For example, this is a drug that's become increasingly popular for a lot of community-acquired MRSA is sensitive to sulfa. So they, get, they have good broad coverage. They're good for uh, upper respiratory tract infections, sul, you know, sinusitis, but they're also good for urinary tract infections and bacteremias for that matter. So it's a, it's a good class. And these, these are cytal because they interfere with the folate synthesis pathway, which is crit critical for bacteria to make DNA to divide. I think that covers the major cytal antibiotics. So now I want to just quickly talk about some of the static antibiotics.